Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the cube root of x minus 1 plus the cube root of 2x minus 1 and that sum is equal to 1. So we're going to be solving for x values, probably real solutions. And then if possible, we can also talk about complex solutions, if I don't forget. So I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. The first method will basically be kind of brute forcing this. Since I have cube roots, it makes sense if I cube both sides, doesn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and cube both sides. When you cube A plus B, you can do it in a couple different ways. But my favorite version is the following. And this also goes well with the cubic formula. That's why I prefer it. It's easier. I don't know. You can also use the binomial theorem with the 1, 3, 3, 1. Same thing. This is just more compact, like more factored. Anyways, uh, I use a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab multiplied by a plus b. Again, it becomes the same thing. Now, when you cube both sides, obviously, you're supposed to get 1. So when, when I cube this radical sum, I get the cube root of x minus 1 cubed plus the cube root of 2x minus 1 cubed. So we're going to get rid of the radicals here plus 3ab, obviously this is my a and this is my b, and when I multiply them together, it's going to be like this with the 3 in the front, it's going to be cube root of x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, that's going to be a product under the radical, times a plus b, but it's just 1. Notice that a plus b is equal to 1, so I just need to multiply by 1, and the answer is 1. Isn't that cool? Easy, right? We don't have to worry about this because a plus b is already given as 1. Cool. Now let's go ahead and clear the radicals. x minus 1. And then this is 2x minus 1. And then this is going to be a cubic something. And I'm probably going to end up, you know, uh, this distributing anyway. So let's just do it now. It's going to give me 2x squared minus x minus 2x. That's minus 3x plus 1 under the cube root. And that equals 1. I don't need to write this 1 again. So nothing cancels out, but we can do the following. We can leave the cube root alone and put everything on the right-hand side. So this is going to give me 3x minus 2. And if you put it on the right-hand side, just negate it. You're going to get cube root of this expression equals 1 minus that. So it's going to be 3 minus 3x. Make sense? Because this is going to be negative, this is going to be positive. Cool. Let's go ahead and cube both sides now. Yay, one more time, right? Because we want to get rid of all the radicals. That can be done by cubing. And when you cube this, it's just going to be quadratic, easy. And when you cube this expression, you may want to take the 3 out or just do it separately or together, whatever. It doesn't matter, but I like to do it this way, 27. And then for the a minus b cubed, we use something similar, a cubed minus b cubed minus 3ab times a minus b. It's just a minus version. And then we get 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals, let's simplify inside first. Uh, I don't think there's any like terms, is there? I don't think so. So I, I might as well just multiply everything by 27. 27 and then minus 27x cubed. This is going to give me negative 3x, so that's going to be negative 81x. This is going to give me positive 3x squared. That's going to turn into 81 x squared. Positive, right? Positive times positive. Cool, cool. Now this is cubic. Let's put everything on the same side. 27x cubed and then 81x squared. That'll be subtracted from the 2. That should be minus 79x squared. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. And then I'll bring the uh, 81x over. It's going to be 78x. And then finally 1 minus 27. That should be a minus or negative 26 equals 0. Okay, cool. Now, one thing that probably makes this problem a little easier would be checking the sum of the coefficients. First of all, take a look because I am looking at the numbers and it looks like the sum is zero, but I have to check. Okay, let me check. It looks like it. 27 minus 26 is one. Negative 79 plus 78 is negative one. So the sum is zero. Yay, success. So x equals one is a solution. Awesome. That's one of the things you should check first. And then if that doesn't work, then you go 
check the odds and evens to see if negative one is a possible solution. X equals one is a solution, great. So we can go ahead and manipulate this expression. I don't think I'm gonna make it monic because uh, of this, this number. If this number was a multiple of three, or even I think, would I need a nine there? Yeah, I think I would need a nine there, multiple of nine. I would go for it, but in this case, no, that's gonna be ugly. So let's just go ahead and solve it. Uh, I can do the following, 27x cubed minus 27x squared. And to get to 79, I need to subtract minus 52x squared. Then I have to follow up with plus 52x to get an x minus one as a factor. But I do have 78x, uh, so that requires 26x addition, minus 26, and all done. Now we can factor by grouping. This is 27x squared times x minus one, minus 52x times x minus one, a technique we commonly use, so hopefully you're used to this by now. And x minus one take out, and you're gonna get a quadratic, which should be easy to solve, right? Obviously. But those numbers are large, and I'm pretty sure you can solve it. It's just gonna be a little bit of factoring, so on and so forth. Let me go ahead and talk about the second method um, before too long, because second method is really cool. You know, most of the time, second method is my favorite, but first method also works. Uh, could be a little longer, brute forcey, but that's okay. Now, the second method kind of uses a similar idea. Remember uh, the naming, we call this A and we call that B. But we just stopped at it. We cube both sides and that was it. But this time we're gonna take it a step further. So cube root of x minus one equals A implies the following, cube both sides, x minus one becomes A cubed. Cube root of two x minus one equals B, cube both sides, two x minus one equals B cubed. Now we're not gonna stop at this and we're actually gonna get rid of the x. How? We're going to isolate x from both of these equations. So find the relationship between a and b. Make sense? Or you can double the uh, first equation and then uh, subtract from the second one or the other way around. doesn't matter. I like to isolate the x. x equals a cubed plus 1 or b cubed plus 1 divided by 2. Remember we have a coefficient so we have to divide. Now these two things are equal independent of x. So we can go ahead and write this. Um, b cubed plus one, cross multiply, two a cubed plus two, or b cubed equals two a cubed plus one. Awesome. So I got this equation and another one, a plus b equals one. Okay, cool. So what do we do with this? Solve it. <laughs> Replace b with something, I don't know, maybe one minus a here, and you're gonna get one minus a cubed equals two a cubed plus one. Notice that the numbers are much, much, much smaller here, right? Obviously that's gonna be a lot easier. One cube minus a cubed minus three a times one minus a equals two a cubed plus one. And this is gonna give me one minus a cubed minus three a plus three a squared equals two a cubed plus one. One cancels out, we end up with a beautiful equation. Three a cubed minus three a squared plus three a is equal to zero. If you take out a 3a, it's going to be a squared minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. Oops, that's supposed to be an a, not a 1. <laughs> okay, so what happens from here is basically, obviously, uh, we're going to get complex solutions from this a, but the other one is going to give us a equals 0. a equals 0 means b equals 1, or a equals 0 means x equals 1. You see that? So x equals 1 comes from here, and the other solution we didn't do is going to come from the solutions of this, and if you solve this, you're gonna get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is square root of 3i, divided by two, and now what's the relationship between x and, I, x and a? x is basically a cubed plus one. x is just gonna be a cubed plus one, so go ahead and cube this, add one, and you'll get the complex solutions. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.